What's up? Welcome to Trackletics Live, the ultimate show for all things track and field. Join us as we dive deep into the sport, interview on track and field athletes, coaches, nutrition specialists, and more. Get ready to hear some dope conversations and gain exclusive insight into what it takes to become a top performer in the sport. Whether you're a seasoned track and field athlete or just starting off, this is the show for you. So make sure you smash that like button, hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Let's get into the show. Oh, snap, everyone. Let's welcome <laughs> Keenan Briggs. How's it going? How's it going? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Can you hear me through the yeah. microphone or this one? Uh, I think yeah. I can hear you through. Yeah. Okay, I'll just take this away then. But yeah, um, how's it going? I'm doing well. It's a rest day for me, so I'm chilling out. Got to sleep in, easy run. How are you feeling today? Man, I'm doing great. Every day is a great day. Just enjoying this whole experience. I love that. love to hear that. Well, we're going to kick this thing off. Um, you've had an amazing track journey. You're doing some amazing things for the jumps now. But I want to take it all the way back, all the way back. Right? I want to hear your track story, how you got into track, how you were competing in track, all that. So what, what is your track story? Um, my track story was basically I didn't know what it was until high school. Uh, I was a football, basketball player. And uh, I remember eighth grade, they had us run around the track. I tried long jump and then got to high school. And my football coach was the one who said, hey, what are you doing in the spring? I just thought there was just two sports, you know, <laughs> and he, he was like, come out the track. You know, I also coach the track team, so come out there. And, yeah, ended up uh, trying the 100-meter the dash in, uh, on the tryouts and not fast enough, you know, and he was like, all right, well, try the hurdles. He's like, I want you to three-step between the hurdles, and I three-stepped, and he was like, uh, I didn't expect you to do that, so you're on varsity. And I ran varsity since freshman year, and mm -hmm. – um, Ran the 300 hurdles once, and I fell, and I got up, and I was like, you know what? This is not for me. So he's like, you got to do four <laughs> events, so figure out what you're going to do instead, and triple jump was something that stood out. So I basically did um, the hurdles, long triple, and high jump through high school. And that was kind of how I got everything going. But I was originally a, a, a hurdler all the way through college. So my first experience with track and field was the hurdles. That's how I got started. Wow, yeah, I did see some hurdle times out there. Um, but let's talk about that long jump. Um, what drew you, you know, to long jumping? Like, as I'm running on the track, I'm a sprinter, so I always look over at the field events, the hammer throw, long jump, triple jump, high jump, and I just feel like it's, there's, you know, so unique. There's such interesting, you know, things about each of those um, events. So what drew you to long jump? Uh, I think it was just like the prima donna in me, you know, it was kind of <laughs> like, it's just me. There's no one next to me. I get everyone to look at me. And uh, I kind of thrived off of that level of um, just pressure. You know, it was everyone gets to see what I'm capable of doing, the hard work that I put in, and I get to showcase those talents. You know, having that little piece really helped me out a lot. Wow. Yeah, no, I can definitely understand that. Um... Okay, the prima donna in you, I'll take that. <laughs> um, but as you got to college, you said you're still hurling, you're um, still long jumping. What college did you go to? I went to Orange Coast College first, junior college out of, out of high school. Um, I just didn't know what question to ask. I didn't, you know, didn't know what to do. I just was like, go to class, and then they'll tell me where to go next. So at uh, OCC, I had Coach Eric Moreno, Coach John Knox, uh, Coach Hodge that really – uh, showcased and taught me the details of the event. So I didn't really learn any technique until I got to college. And there, Coach Moreno had me up every Saturday. You know, we would have track weeks on Fridays in junior college, but he'd be like, see you tomorrow, 8 o'clock. And I'm like, why am I the only one training? Like, what, what's, what are you doing? But I just trusted his process. And, you know, he let me know that in order to be great, I had to put in the work. And, you know, my potential was great, but it's nothing unless you actually apply it, you know, apply your skill set. So uh, Coach Hodge taught me how to triple jump. Coach Moreno taught me how to 
really uh, apply the hurdles and I was ranked in the state, was able to break the school records at OCC and earn a scholarship. You know, um, it took me three years to graduate junior college. I didn't know that full time was to transfer out with 60 units and full time is 12. So the math didn't add up right. And I ended up having to go to Fullerton uh, Junior College for a year where I luckily barely got out because I was such in a space of let me work and there's no more track anyway. So let me just work hard and ended up um, training at Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton, where at the time Coach Asher, Chris Rasher was an assistant and he saw me working out. You know, he's like, where you at? And he ended up calling me right before the end of my third year of junior college. And um, I ended up uh, taking, retaking classes because I failed these, these classes. He got me into classes at LA City and Irvine Valley. So I was back and forth every day, driving, putting miles on the car. And, um, you know, it worked out. So I was able to pass the classes, got to Cal State LA, and was able to really like see my journey through, um, get my degree, um, being coached by Sheila Hudson and Chris Asher, and just learning a lot about everything. So I really grew up and matured in the sport of track and field at the college level, but I had to get there first. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that process. Yeah, it is it's definitely a journey to get there in college. Like you said, um, I had a similar experience taking 12 units, you know, just to be eligible. Um, and then coming to find out 60 is full time and you're a little short, you know, so you got to play a little catch up on the back end. Um, yeah. But then you went off, you went from OCC, um, took some classes going back and forth between JCs. Then you ended up at Cal State LA. What was your experience like at Cal State LA? It was uh, really fun. You know, I was living in the dorms. I never really had that experience to be away like that. Um, it was close enough to where I still felt that I was still nearby, not too homesick but able to, you know, still be away. Um, it's a commuter school. So we partied in Hollywood. So I turned 21. So I was able to experience that Hollywood life. Um, you know, we had athletes from all over. And I really feel like because we were considered the underdog against USC, UCLA, um, we had a chip on our shoulder to really work that much harder. And, you know, we were division two. But every track meet we had was against UCLA and all these D1 schools. Track and field, you know, you compete against everyone. So we competed against – I competed against Alan Johnson, one of the Olympic record um, – one of the Olympic hurdlers. Um, uh, Coach Holmes, who, you know, has his hurdle uh, technique uh, yeah. program. We ran against him. I ran against all the big dogs. And we used to have Joanna Hayes, Maurice Green all come to our school just to kind of talk to us and mentor us. So I think, you know um, – I just had a really good experience. And Sheila Hudson, who was a five-time NCAA champion, American uh, triple jump record holder, she really instilled a lot into us with just expectation. You know, it's great to want to be great, but it's different to be, to be great and be great every time. You know, just to be great in the state is great, but not in, but in the U.S. and the world is a big difference. And so, you know, uh, our three triple jumpers were all top three in the in the nation and that year for our nationals was actually better than the d1 national for triple jump brandon rulak was up in 55 feet you know and so it was a big difference um that year so i mean i just really had the best experience um i matured i i grew up uh, we didn't have food where it was given to us like the buffet style so we had to cook. So I had many cooking experiences <laughs> where I figured out how to cook. <laughs> and uh, so it was, it was a great experience overall. And I think, um, you know, even the school that you never heard of might be the best fit for you. Because I never heard of Cal State LA until I showed up on campus. And I had been signed UCLA on the sheet because I didn't know what Cal State LA was until I got there. <laughs> so, you know, I really say that, you know, it's important for – athletes, younger athletes, to go outside of the, the name brand schools and really see what they're about because sometimes that will fit you better than the other schools because you get to be your true self and you get to utilize your talents versus just it be a job. True, yeah. It might fit you better. They might treat you better. You know, you'll have that environment of coaches and teammates that support you, believe in you, and want to see the best. 
as opposed to the cutthroat, you know, of the name brand schools that you go to. Um, and I, on my last episode, I was literally talking to a uh, another athlete, you know, comparing D1 to D2 and how people go D2 and I feel like they didn't make it. But then you realize, nah, we, we're running those same times, you know, so I need to get in shape and, and get ready because regardless of D1, D2, D3, these people are still out, out here performing, you know, so it's not literally about the, the, the division itself. It's about, you know, um, executing and, you know, um, not just taking the talent for granted, but actually putting in the work to execute as well, you know. So that's, you've had a very impressive journey all the way to now. Um, we got the Leap Squad, me, we got Leap Squad, right? We got Coach 101. So let's talk a little bit about that. What is Leap Squad? What, what's this, this jump track <laughs> that you got going on that's blowing up? Yeah, so uh, 10 years ago, I put together Leap Squad. Um, Leap Squad stands for Lead, Elevate, Achieve, and Prevail. We're leaders in our community. We elevate our standards. We achieve all goals we set for ourselves and prevail through all types of adversity. So the Leap Squad, you know, even though, you know, the, the niche that I fell into was jumping, um, I just used that just because that's where I was at the moment. I was jumping. So I was documenting that. But the Leap Squad is, is a, it's developing character. It's a character development program. And when you talk to the athletes, when you um, see how they compete, you know that they're a Leap Squad athlete. You can tell by their presence. And it comes down to just developing their character and showing them who they really are and, you know, elevating their, their standards, you know. So this program has really developed because the athletes are bought into that mentality. They're bought into that way of thinking. And when you have these expectations, um, you, you, your presence is completely different, you know. And this came from Coach Hudson at Cal State LA. You know, our group back then was called the Elevators. And we just had to make nationals. You couldn't compete for elevators if you didn't make nationals. So that's just an athletic standard, you know. And so when I brought that down to the youth level, um, I just modified it a little bit to, to tailor it towards the kids. And it's, it's completely a way of thinking. So I truly believe that the athlete's performance is reflective of their confidence levels. And when their confidence levels is high, they're going to have some great marks, you know. So that's kind of where that started. Um, Dominique Rotolo was the first athlete, uh, part of that group, and she's doing really well now. And so um, that, that's blossomed, you know. Um, then I started looking at youth meets, and I started seeing, you know, how come these, these kids aren't getting the same level of treatment that I think that we should be getting? Because at, at the pro level, I was getting everything. You know, I had sponsors. I had elite level coaching support went to the high school level to coach, and I didn't see coaching happening. I went to the youth level, didn't see or hear coaching happening. It was just find the board and jump. And so I said, we're missing out on so much because we have all these resources with professional timing, the red jackets officiating, you know, all these things. You go to the jumps, it's a, it's a volunteer. You go to the jumps, they're measuring the pit with a rake, not even a measuring tape, you know. So it's like this is – pushing our events away, then you go back to the pro level and say, I thought we were the leader in the triple jump, the long jump, and high jump. And it's starting to, to balance out and even move away. And it comes down to we got kids that were not wearing the correct shoes, not being taught the correct way to jump and prepare their body. So I say, you know what? Instead of complaining, I'm going to actually be the change. And so I said, I'm not going to complain about these track meets. I'm going to host one. I'm not going to complain about these coaches that may or may not know. I'm going to be that coach. Now, the coaches that want to know, here's a program. It's just ways to kind of put that out. And so for, you know, for three years straight, I put out the training tip Tuesday, every single Tuesday, put out everything that I know, everything that I apply. I was not trying to hide any information. This is what I'm doing. You can use it if you want. If you don't, it's okay. And then after a while, you know, it was kind of like, Every single time I go to a track meet, every single time I go to a nationals meet, to a college meet, coaches would say, thanks for your input. Thanks for your, uh, your tips. You know, I know everything already. However, your perspective added more to my value. Or the coaches don't understand how I'm saying it, but they understand how you're saying it. Now we're at state. Now we're at nationals. And so, 
you know, whether I supported you or not or inspired you, that's the overall goal is to get more people out to be able to help the kids because at the end of the day, that's all that it's about. It's about the next generation and helping give more to them. And um, Leap Squad is all of that. It's all of it. Right. That is amazing. It's been amazing to watch the journey. I remember watching the, the tips on Tuesdays. And I'm like, man, I'm, I started learning about jumps, you know, being a sprinter. I'm just always looking over like, uh, we got this joke, like, we're working hard. They're just playing in the sand. But I started to realize, nah, they're not just playing in the sand. Like, jumps is not easy. So I'm telling my teammates, like, all right, bro, you joking. Go see how far you jump, you know? Yeah. And I started showing people your content, showing some of my teammates your content. They started following you. And, um, like, you can see the value, you know, that you have there. So first, I do want to say, you know, thank you for – providing that for the sport, for the coaches, for the athletes, for other for people in other events that get to learn more about your event and appreciate it more and understand the hard work that you go through, what it takes to actually be a jumper. Um, thank you for that. that. That was amazing for you to actually sit down and do that because track and field is kind of a, a secret sport, you know. I have coaches on the podcast. I have athletes on the podcast. And I love to ask, what's your favorite workout? And they're like, ooh, I can't give away too much. Ooh, I can't die. You know, yeah. here you are giving everything away, programming, tips, recording at practice, showing the before and the after, the progression. Like, you're literally giving it all away with confidence, knowing that, you know, uh, it'll return to you in the future, but really just focusing on helping athletes globally because this, this Instagram stuff is not just here in California. Yeah. We got people from Botswana, from Kansas, from Missouri, Jamaica. Like, it's this stuff is global, and it, Instagram or social media in general does not close because I know you do have a YouTube as well. So this mm. this social media stuff, um, these YouTube platforms, it doesn't close. It's, it's global. While you're sleeping, somebody could be watching your video and being inspired. I'm sure other coaches are, you know, refreshing themselves or refreshing their knowledge, watching your content as well, you know. So it's been amazing to watch your journey for you to create something like that for the Leap Squad because I've been to track and field uh, meets where it's just sprints, distance carnivals to support my teammates, but I, I had never saw a jump meet, you, you know. Um, and a lot of my jump teammates always felt like they weren't getting any love. So for you to create something like that, is, it's been amazing. Congratulations on that for sure. I'm wishing you nothing but the best for that. I wish, you know, to continue to see that um, succeed for real. It's been amazing to watch that. Thank you. Now about this, uh, about this, uh, no problem, of course, about this coach 101, right? Because you said coming out of high school, you didn't know, you know, what questions to ask. Um, you didn't know who to talk to, how to be recruited. And I noticed that you actually give some of that information out as well. You're, you're telling parents about the business of being recruited and, you know, the business of track and field as well. What is Coach 101? How did you create that and why? Yeah. Um, so specifically, it's, uh, it's Jump 101, right? And so um, Jump 101 basically is every year I get the same exact questions every single year. It's how do I jump further? My step phase isn't working. Um, my approach is off. And every kid just expressing the, what, they, what they are missing out on. And so I put together uh, a step-by-step -step program from beginning to end. So on my YouTube, you can get content. You can see I have a 1,000 videos on there. And, but it's scattered. It's all over the place. You know? And I actually got some questions of like, hey, how do I just follow a step-by-step -step program? And so I say, you know what? I'm going to put that all together now and, and so that program goes from understanding like how i think and how i operate um some of my belief systems when it comes to training um that are completely against the traditional way of training but the result is actually better so you know that's just my personal way of doing it you know and so um it's from the philosophy it's from the understanding of the the concepts of approaching certain things then to the physical aspect, to the, the approach, how to get your approach, how far you should be, the shoes you should wear, the mentality, how to set goals, um, the drills you should be doing, how they look, how to set them up. And then from there, 
the actual day-by-day, step-by-step workouts, reps, and sets you should be doing throughout your season. So it's a six-week program. How can be extended all the way through the year, depending on how, you know, you're set up. If you're in multiple sports, you can do it in six weeks. Um, you can do it in three weeks like Obi, which I'm going to post later today, who improved three feet and triple jump, changed his whole life. Went from 36, I'm sorry, uh, from 43.6 to 47.2, and now he's going to Cal Berkeley. So, you know, he went from a JV athlete to now one of the state leaders and is going to state this weekend. And so it's like, you can be just like him. I can't guarantee any of this. But what I can say is enough athletes have, so why not try it? And it just allows me to answer those same questions without having to answer the phone or check on YouTube. Because I don't lie, it was a lot of emails every single week, every single year. And um, I found myself behind the desk. And I'm like, I want to be with the kids. I want to be out there coaching. You know, so when I put that program out, then when COVID happened, I was able to say, you know what? I already have virtual training. I had um, Jordan Neely out in Canada who every year was one meter improving every year, just kept improving. And I was like, man, like you're going to slow down someday, but let's keep this going, you know? And um, I was like, this virtual thing is, is really easy. It comes easy to me. So then I put together the virtual team and a virtual team has been, I can coach athletes anywhere. I got athletes in Singapore. I got athletes all over the U.S. having the same exact results. It just requires them to be uh, dedicated. And it also requires a coach to coach to be open understanding that we're all on the same, same page. And we're trying to get the athlete there. And at the end of the day, the kid's still wearing your uniform. You know, so, so regardless of anything, it's, it's we're working together. And if the kid feels like, like they need more, then Leap Squad, the virtual team, the shop, the uh, Jump 101 uh, course is just a way to add to that without overtraining. Because you don't want to overtrain. You don't want to wear your body into the ground by doing two practices. It's just whatever you're missing, you can add that one or two piece in and then uh, up your ability and get yourself exposed. True. You said a major uh, uh, key word there, overtraining. I feel like a lot of track and field athletes are overtraining because their coaches are trying to make up for, I don't know if it's the, the workouts that we've been doing or the lack of performance. I don't know what it is, but then they try to push too much too soon. And now we're overtraining, getting injured or we're just burnt out. And you're wondering why your performance is declining. So that's a major key there. Yeah. Um, making sure that you don't overtrain. You're actually, you know, um, managing your, your uh, workload, all of that. Um, but how does somebody join your um, Jump 101 program? How do they go about that? Uh, the Jump 101, they just visit shopjump101.com. And then it's a pretty bootleg site. <laughs> you know, I just put it together as quick as possible because the content is what actually sells it. Um, I just put that together in a day, the site, you just visit that. And then you literally just sign up and you go through all 40 something modules. Um, it took me 20 years to kind of put together, but a few weeks to actually edit and put onto paper. So, um, you know, that information is there. And you're also pushed into a Discord group. So now you're able to talk to coaches, um, get feedback from that group as well. And it's really supportive because, you know, um, you have coaches in there, athletes in there that are saying, hey, this is what I did to help understand this concept. And you get to learn from each other. So a lot of peer learning. And then when it comes to the virtual team, the link in my bio on Instagram, um, it has all the services I offer from digital video analysis to just simple phone calls. You know, hey, this, I have this going on. I need some help. You know, all that is listed on there. And the virtual team is where you can sign up for that. Um, I'm now taking athletes for the summer program where you can, like, train virtually, where I can literally coach you through your phone while you're at the track meet. Um, Ethan Fong is one of them. You know, I was able to coach him through his mom, and his mom was just yelling out all the directions. So she's like, I feel like I know what I'm talking about, you know. Yeah. So it just, it just it's, it's help, it's help, you know. And also having a coach from an athlete's perspective in your corner, no matter who it is, it creates comfort. It creates a safety piece to where you're like, you know what, like my mom or dad is here, my uncle's here, or my coach is here. It helps you kind of calm down. And um, that adds to the performance overall. But, um, but basically on that, 
the link in my bio is where it you'll have the options and then you set up a call i talk to you and figure out if this works because i don't take everybody you know it's not about your ability it's i don't i can't work with you if you're doing football seven on seven you're doing track and basketball and soccer on the same day i'm going to advise you you might want to you know bring things down because whatever you put in the track and field is what you get out of it but in football and basketball you can have a pulled hamstring and be the player of the game you know with track is if you're 40 pounds you know overweight then you're going to be 40 pounds slower than what you could be you know so it's really important that you're living a healthy lifestyle you're managing your performance managing your time um, keeping your mind right and all those things and all the services that are listed on there kind of go through each phase of the triple jump and the hurdles and everything track and field itself. Yeah, that's an amazing program. Um, I know a couple of people that were on the program. I've seen people at track meets wearing the bags. I've actually coached high school and they, you know, some of our new students show up with the bag and I'm like, oh, you was at least go out. And he's like, man, you know, it changed my life. I'm really serious about the jumps. Um, uh, and one thing that I really see from your athletes or people that participate in your program is the confidence. Like you said before, that confidence alone, you know, um, whether they're at Arcadia and some people are, you know, freaking out. They like, oh, my God, we're at a big meet. There's so many people here. Your athletes are so cool, calm, collected, just <laughs> poised, just they're ready to compete. You know, if anything, they're excited. They're ready to go out there and perform well while other athletes are kind of thrown off their game, right? Um, whether it's the – there's so many different factors that go into the jumps, the wind, the pit, the, all of that, right? Um, but all of your athletes that I've noticed are so confident. They're like, I got this. I know what I'm doing. Um, so it's been amazing to witness that program. But I want to talk a little bit more about that. You said you have 40 modules. Um, it took you 20 years to understand all of the knowledge and put it together, but – you were really able to execute and put it all into a program so that, you know, if you're at a track meet practice on another team, you can actually go through these modules and understand what you need to be doing to, you know, perform well. Right. Um, what's one of the like biggest things that you've had to implement into that program to help people? Is it like understanding, I don't know where to take off from, um, I'm noticing a lot of people are like, it seems like they're collapsing, so they're not jumping as far as they can. They're sitting a little low. Like, what's one of the biggest things, you know, that, that jumpers are dealing with that is in your program that immediately helps somebody jump further and improve their performance? Um, I have a new athlete, Robert Russ. He goes to Great Oak. He's a senior. And I talked to him, and I was like, so what do you, what do you take from the um, the, the virtual and he's like, I got pages of notes, pages. And he said, and you can hear him kind of like fumbling through all the notes. And, <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, yeah, he took a lot of notes, right? And I'm thinking, you know, or he responded with, honestly, it was the concepts. Just understanding why do I want to be flat-footed on the board? Why do I need to be upright? Um, what's the value of you know, movement. Why do I have to have the step? Like all those pieces, he's like, I didn't know any of that. He's like, I was just running and jumping, you know? And so <laughs> the, the lead squad athletes are being, uh, they're kind of, they're students of the sport. There we go. They're students of the sport. And so they're really understanding like, what am I doing? How and why? And I, my generation, coaches didn't explain why. It was always because I said so. And <laughs> that didn't help me because I'll do anything as an athlete. I just need to know, well, why am I standing on my head? Like, tell me why. Oh, because the blood rushes to my head and my ears do this. Like, oh, okay. You know, and I just need to know why. Generation now can always find out why through watching a video. But for me, I didn't have video access. It was one person that said, do this. I'm thinking to them, I can't see you doing it. I don't understand it. So my biggest thing is the why and the how. Um, and what I've seen is that the why and how, when you explain that, it creates trust. And when you, the athlete trusts what you say, then when you say, stop watching the board, 
can say at one time, and they stop watching the board. And now the next jump, you can, you can, you know, Bianca James was at CIF uh, finals and was behind the board four feet the first jump, over the board five feet the second jump. The third jump, I moved her back five feet to get on the board and still over the board three feet. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with her. Like the wind was going back and forth at Cerritos. And I just said, you know what? This is her last jump. She's a senior. She's crying, right? And I'm like, go to your mark and jump, her original mark. I said, whatever's going on, it'll stop. And it literally did. She ended up making masters. She um, was one of the last people to qualify in the masters. But she wouldn't have been able to trust me if I hadn't explained why, how, and when, and where her whole four years. So it, it took me to become vulnerable. It took me to becoming uh, the best coach I could be for her and her to see my mistakes and growth. So I got to be a, a friend of hers. And then when it got down to the, the nitty gritty of it, she trusted it. So the, the secret, I guess, is me as a person being the best person I can be and letting the kids know what I'm physically and emotionally doing that helps them um, trust that process. You know, they yeah, no. trust me. Yeah. Right. I can definitely understand that. Um, if you watch their Bermuda games, um, uh, Tara and uh, Miss Burks was battling back and forth. Yeah. Um, and there's a video where Tara, you know, she was behind all, literally, the whole competition. Yeah. She said she went to her mark. She shut everything out of her mind. She trusted her coach. She remembered what she had been working on in practice, the things her coach has been saying to her, um, from feedback from her, you know, uh, training partner. She got, you know, everything else out of her mind, just ran, jumped, boom. Like, and now worldly, like, number one. So um, I definitely understand what you're saying. And the concepts as well, you know, um, as sprinters, everybody loves the toe drag. Um, but that's not really the, the concept that you should be going after. It turns out, um, as my coach says, it's a low heel recovery. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that your, your foot is so low, your, your heel is so low, you might drag your toe, yeah. right? But a lot of people are just scraping the track with their toe, thinking that, you know, oh, I'm running cool, I'm running like Usain Bolt, and that's not exactly what he was going after. He was yeah. trying something else, and that kind of happens. But it could also slow you down if you don't understand the concept, if you don't understand exactly what you're supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. You're not supposed to cycle out of the blocks. You're literally low heel recovery so that you're pushing forward. So I completely understand that. That means that program for sure is that's a major key. Uh, if you're a jumper and you're watching this, you definitely need to go get that program. Tap the link in this bio for sure. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little jealous. I wish, you know, we had stuff like this for, for sprints, but it's so, it's so secretive. I can't let them know what we're doing. But here you are. You're literally giving it all out, um, wanting to help jumpers across the world. Like you said, you have people participating you know, from all over the world, from different levels as well, right? From the youth level, high school, coaches are in your program. So that's huge. That's huge. How do you feel being able to help so many people, you know, um, like, how, how does that make you feel? What, what does that do for you when coaches are coming up to you and they're telling you, thank you, man, when athletes are, you know, committing to colleges and getting these scholarships? How does that make you feel? I mean, it feels good. I, I, feel, I feel accomplished. You know, when I was 17, I asked um, like myself what I wanted to do with my life. And I said, I want to help people. And so this is li pretty much it. So I'm living my purpose. And, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm deserving of everything because I put 100% into what I do. And um, I'm just grateful to have this gift and I'm utilizing the gift that I have and enjoying it, enjoying every, every moment of it. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. Congratulations again. Um, I know uh, you and some of your athletes are heading off to state this weekend, right? Yeah. Um, what's yeah. something that you focus on, something that, you know, um, has been helping your athletes get this far, um, you know, to compete in, in the state meet? 
Uh, one is going to be load management. Um, a lot of high school coaches like to win league. So we get six weeks away from state. So when you're peaking and lighting things up six weeks away, uh, it actually messes up your, your peak cycle. Um, that's number one. Um, the next part with load, ma load, man load management is the amount of jumps uh, and events that you're doing. So many times I see athletes doing the 200, the 400, the relay, and long jump or and triple jump. They don't realize how much it takes out of you to run down the runway 40 meters and then jump. You know, like that, if you were to actually put a calculator on how much, what percent it takes out, it, I want to say it's like a 200. Yeah, 200. <laughs> it, takes, it takes out of you. You need 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get a full recovery. You know, but the athletes are doing so much. And what I see is that uh, sometimes coaches are looking for points so they get the team awards versus taking an athlete and giving up maybe five points at least to get one athlete to stay. You know, so uh, it's the load management. And also what people forget about is we just had Masters last week. Masters, it's a prelim and final. You got six jumps for some, for some athletes. Then you have State, which is on Friday. They get three jumps. Okay, then you have the finals on Saturday. They get upwards of six jumps. So now let's say, hey, I'm just doing a long and triple. That's all I'm doing. You did six jumps of long, six of triple at Masters on Saturday. Then you go to state prelims. You do three jumps long, three jumps, uh, triple jump. You make the final. You get six jumps on Saturday for long and for triple. When's the last time you did a back-to-back -back event day? Also, that's three track meets. And if you do the math, most high schools get four jumps. So you're essentially getting five to six track meets all in seven day period. Now let's add in, time. oh, I'm on the relay team. Oh, I'm on the 200. Oh, I got to add in high jump. It, it's the management. And, you know, I watched uh, Trey Cunningham last year when he made the, the, the team last year. They asked him a good question. They said, how did you prepare for this long season? He said, the coach took me out the relay because he knew how many times I was going to run this year. And we set up, up so I can run this many, and my training schedule was to reflect how many times I would run. That is great management, management of an athlete. And so now he's competing at NCAA Nationals. I don't care. It's a regular meet. I'm going to do well, but, but I got USAs to qualify for the championships. And he was on that program. And uh, I think a coach that can understand the calendar of an athlete and respect the the events that are there can really put together a great a great um a great journey for each individual athlete. Wow, I I just learned a lot just from that small <laughs> uh, that that one question there. Um, that's huge. Um, I I was able to coach high school last year uh, at Gar High School, um, and my best friend is the head coach. And that's one thing he always, you know, uh, is putting into my head, like, man, we're not really worried about league. Like, we're worried about state. If we have people that's going to qualify for state or win anything at state, we can win league, but we're not going to, you know, like, peak our athletes at league because we still have all these other meets to get to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the prelims, masters, stays, like, all of that stuff adds up. And their student life, you know, where finals coming up, you got all yeah. the, like all this stress on the athlete, all of that adds up, you know, and doing multiple events um, is it seems fun to be able to do this and that, but it, it all adds up. So he was the one that actually um, introduced me to low management. I started looking at my own program like, dang, OK, I'm kind of just out here running. Um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't really think about my calendar, you know. I feel yeah. like most, most coaches, especially at the high school level, are like either they're not aware of load management or they might not care about load, ma load management. Mm -hmm. But in the end, that hurts your athletes, you know. Um, and it's all a, a, a stepping stone for what's to come next year if they're not seniors, you know, if they're sophomores, juniors, like 
all of that, you know, kind of lines up. It's a stepping stone for next year. So you don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, put too much on, on them. Then they're injured. And then that, you know, bleeds into next year. All of that literally adds up. So that's huge. That's major. Yeah. Um, how did you get to a point where, you know, you started managing the, the calendar of an athlete and the load management? Like, how did you figure that out? Uh, Rick Stasi. Rick Stasi had nothing to do with track and field, but everything to do with the physical body and the science. So um, when I graduated college, I from Cal State LA, I moved to New Jersey for, for like this, this job out there. I came back and um, I ended up getting a job at Athletic Republic. We don't have them out here, but they're all over the United States. And it's an athlete training center. It's kind of like a velocity sports it's like one of those type of things. And, um, you know, they had protocols that were, if you run this exact workout for three weeks or six weeks or whatever, here are the average national results. And I was like, you over here claiming results like that? Like, you know, two tenths faster than a hundred? So now I was like, okay. So then I took athletes through this program and then I saw the results, it matched up. Then you add in coaching that elevates those, those numbers. And then I said, well, how do you keep the results going? It's only six weeks or whatever. And I said, well, if you keep the training going, it does this. So I said, let me try. I'm going to apply that for myself. I did it. Saw those results. Then enter Rick Stasi. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde of, of kinesiology, you know, biomechanical movements. And he was like, stop doing all this stuff. Do this. And I've never been that sore ever in my life from his workouts every time and it was more than weight training i would be sore with body weight stuff and i'm like how am i more sore how am i more explosive and he broke down everything of human body and it was nothing what the textbooks say nothing at all what the textbooks say and so i'm not gonna lie i, I fought it for the first three months i'm like I don't understand what's going on. It makes no sense. And it was me, uh, Shane De La Mora, who was an uh, MMA fighter, uh, Dave Dawson, who was an NFL player, um, Brandon Talbot, who was a volleyball player. We all joined this program at the same time. And he, Rick was like, I'm going to try some new stuff. He tried all this new stuff. All of us were ranked in the world. I was ranked in the world, never trained on a track at all. I just did only specifically his stuff and added a couple things that were track related. Um, Brian and Talbot broke the Guinness World Record of a single leg box jump. Dave Dawson never played a game in the NFL, but made every team because he was two times, three times the amount. Would do whatever you did in bench press, the lineman, everybody, he would do 10 times the amount. And he just by far was the strongest athlete on that team. And they kept bringing him, inviting him to training camps because he was a whole level different athlete. And so um, I studied that concept. So I studied the science. I studied what the textbook said that didn't make any sense. Um, and then I studied, you know, that. And then I also applied everything. Then after I applied it, I took a couple athletes, Victoria Reich, Kel Kavanon, uh, Dustin Holtz. I said, here, do this program. And then they went from 10-4 to 10-9. Victoria went to Cal Berkeley. She excelled. And I was just like, and she was in pole vault too. So I didn't know about pole vault at all. I just knew how to get them in shape. And then um, I just kept applying these and I kept bringing the years down. And then I brought it down to seven-year-olds. How do we train a seven-year-old to get the same type of success and keep them in track for a very long time and healthy? Right. And as that went go kept going, I just kept seeing the same results every year. And then now I'm kind of bored with the training program because I'm like, it just hop in line. I've been lying to the training program, and now I got free time to, to sit and talk to them. How are you doing today? How's your mom doing? How are your grades? You know, what was your, what was your last weekend like? And now I'm hanging out talking to them. And so this program is just over and over again the same thing. And that's why I was able to automate it and put it into, to, you know, uh, automated form. Because I see a lot of coaches that will have a program written out. They have it in their head. They write it out. And it's a whole program for the next six months. You don't realize that you have a woman who's going through her woman things. 
you can't ha have a high stress workout on a Monday when she's going through the mo woman things. You might have a guy who was working all last week, you know, and it's like my back is sore. You can't do that same workout, even if it's at a lot of percentage. So I said, okay, I'm going to put together this idea and program, which en eventually ended up being the same program as Dan Path. So I stopped what I was doing. So I'm like, Dan Path knows a lot more stuff. So I'm going to just take his and inspire uh, mine and, you know, uh, mold that, that together. And um, that was able to have a template. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling this way. Great. I'm going to pull off this workout 3A for you today because that's going to benefit your body for today. And then kept that rolling through. And it's been the same every single year, all the athletes, new face, same results. And um, it's been fun. It's been fun, and I want to I want to keep it going and expand upon that to work with more athletes and get more people to the level, especially the athletes that are outside of high school. Because once you finish high school, once you finish college, your life with track and field changes. And so I'll be able to adjust that and support those athletes too. I know I said a lot. But... <laughs> yeah, no, hey, hey, you you hit the nail right on the head. You answered the question very well. Um, your program is definitely a game changer. Um, and my next question was going to be, what, what is your goal with the program? Do you have any post-collegiate athletes? Because I do know of one who was ranked in the world, you know, um, and um, his, I, I used to always ask him when he's, when he's out here, out at the Sharks with us, um, Kimani Briggs, I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, your program is interesting, bro. Like, what are you doing for the jumps? You know, you come on these days. But then you see him, you know, uh, compete so well and he's ranked in the world. Like, I used to always try to pick his brain and learn and understand um, yeah. because I know, you know, you're, you're a, a major key to the program, right? It, it's you behind it. You're the mad scientist behind it. So <laughs> what is the goal? What, what are you creating for the post-collegiate athlete now? Uh, uh, I'm working on a few things. I can't get into too much, too, too much detail with the specifics. But I see that the, there's a lot of voids. You know, there's a lot of areas that are like uh, not even gray, they're just missing. Yeah. You know, um, you gotta, I think about the life of a, of a D1 college athlete. They probably were the best at their high school. So they probably were athletes of the year. They probably had a bunch of resources available. They go to college, they're given free food. They're given a scholarship. They're told what to do, when to wake up. And then you graduate college, that's it. There's nowhere to go. It's I want to go pro, but I'm three inches away or I'm half a second away from this pro mark. But it's like, but I don't have a therapist. I don't have a, a tracking train on. Now I got to go to 24 hour fitness and I can't drop the weights when I could in the gym because we had the bumper plates. Like all these little details that aren't there. Now I'm by myself training. Oh, I got to pay bills. I got to figure out how to work. How do I work part-time but get a full-time pay? I got to be on my feet all day at this one job. This other job, I'm sitting all day. I want to live on my own. I don't want to have 10 roommates. All of these things come into play. We don't have that resource. There you go. Um, we don't have that resource, but you can, you can go overseas for basketball. You can, you know, uh, join another league for football. You know, baseball, you can be 18 years old and get, and get paid $2,000 a month. So like there's all these resources. Now I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's not there. So we get to fill what's missing. And you know, um, yeah. So that's kind of that, right? And then with Kimani, it was I told him we got to commit three years. Just say I'm committed three years for this post collegiate thing. See how it goes. Because three years means one year to to learn how to jump with me. And then the next thing is you get to get feedback on what you're missing, what we can add to it, your body can adapt to it. And so this year, he's like, hey, I need more speed training. And I'm like, you're right. Let's, let's get that going. He's like, well, I don't want to run by myself. So, you know, uh, it worked out to where JB and the Sharks was like, hey, I'm available as a resource. Come on down. And so he was doing that. And then it was like, okay, well, how are you going to incorporate the jumping? And we, I had him decide on his program. He's like, I want to be with the Sharks to get the training because there's great training there. I'm, I'm with adults, not kids, training, which is another experience, you know. And he's able to come to Leaf Squad, and he tells me what he's going to do. I give him feedback on what it may look like, and he's, he's free within his program. 
you know, and things are working out. He was a able to pop off eight meters 23 or eight meters 22. And um, right now he's, you know, still growing and learning about some things. Um, but that's the process of the sport. There's no set plan. You know, the plan is written after. It's, it's what we did, but it's where we also failed in the beginning. So he's going through his process and he's learning. And um, the goal is to keep him excited about the sport and keep his mind, keep his mind right. So, you know, so right now he's one that uh, is able to show, like, how it could work at the next level. And um, he finished ninth at USA's last year. And the goal this year is to, to make the finals and, and go from there and go on and compete overseas. So it's just step by step, you know, and this program is always evolving. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a perfect program. I don't ever expect it to be. And we just go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it. Watching his journey has been amazing. Um, he's definitely a talented athlete, but he works so hard out there as well. Literally, he's pushing himself in the, in the speed training that we're doing. Um, and I, I can only imagine what he's doing out there for the jumps. Like, I see his work ethic. I see how serious he is about it. Um, so having a resource like yourself has – I know that's helping take his game to another level. Um, but, you know, other people can actually join your program as well online. So – he doesn't have to be the only one, you know. They can get the education, the insight, the information that he's learning anywhere in the world um, and take their jumps to the next level as well. Um, but you, you, you spoke a little bit about what you're creating for that uh, post-collegiate athlete, but what's the, what's the complete end goal? What, are, what would really set your heart on fire, something that you would be really proud to accomplish after all of this is said and done, what's, what's your end goal for jumps, for track and field, for yourself, for your business? What's the, what's the end goal? Uh, my end goal is just to inspire millions, you know, to inspire and apply, you know, um, just my viewpoints. And when it comes to the track and field world is I feel like the business of the sport is, is ran a certain way. And I think we need to press the update button on how we run it. I think if we press that update button, it'll bring more to the community. I feel that the higher paying jobs for coaches are at the highest level when all the kids are at the lowest level. It's inverted. And once we start to invest into the coaches for the lower levels, then you're going to see an influx of athletes competing at a very high level. You know, um, I do feel that the college system can be adjusted to be in favor of the athletes on an individual level. Um, you know, I have a lot of athletes that are at the, the D1, D2, D3 level, and I'm hearing the greats and I'm hearing the negative pros and cons of it. Um, I experience my pros and cons of it. And I just think that as, as we have the we keep having this conversation of what could be adjusted, how it'll look, why it needs to be a certain way, what's working, what's not. I think that's where it can really develop. You know, I, I know that the NBA and they have their people that run their things their, their certain ways, but you can go to the G League and make $100,000, you know, and develop there. But we don't have that in track and field. You know, and if, if they do sponsor you, I know from business standpoint is you could just mess up and just be a, a person that doesn't understand and do something crazy and now that their money that they invested is that money's gone you know so we're in the middle of this cancel, cancel culture so it's even harder to have someone invest in a person versus a brand so that's where it's like i think the invest money the investing money for a lot of these people should go into the clubs such as i will love to see sharks sponsored by Nike, Adidas, or whoever. And now you're sponsoring the club, so now if the athlete messes up, the athlete can go home. But it doesn't affect the overall team and the resources. I see what JB's doing over there. And he has a great setup. You know, he has the resources for trainers, the strength stuff, everything. But it took that, you know, that school, that college to have those things. You know, it if he didn't have it, he had to drive over here and over there. So, you know, I'm in a spot where I don't have everything either. You know, I don't have everything, but I'm making do with what I have. Could you imagine if I had every single thing that I, that I needed 
where this whole program would be. The first six years of the Leaf Squad, we trained on the outside of a baseball field. No track, no runway, athletes at state every year. So, you know, it, it's, it's a difference. And the reason why I'm so confident, this is probably may be a tangent, so confident in my ability is I was taking a bus an hour and a half to practice, an hour and a half to Leaf Squad practice, an hour and a half back home, and that was my day. You know, I would carry all my, all my stuff, my training gear, but the hurdles, I had all that on my bag. And I did that for, for months. And there were times where I was getting $20,000 for the year. That was my pay, take home for the year. So I've been through it. You know, when I was, as a pro, I was literally giving blood to make rent. So, you know, I understand what every single athlete goes through. I was injured both my senior years of college. That's how my career ended. You know, I, I get it. And so since I get it, here is how you change it. And instead of me talking and suggesting things, I'm just going to be that person that makes it, makes it happen. And so I have a lot of things that are happening right now behind the scenes. That's why the other day on my um, Instagram, uh, Instagram story, I said, don't worry, I got it. Because I truly do. And I'm, I'm making the changes and you'll, you'll be able to see, see what's happening. And hopefully you make it in time, you know. Well, coach, get over early. I definitely, yep, I definitely see it happen. Um, I want to say I appreciate having a coach like you in the sport that's looking out for the sport, that wants to see the sport grow, that wants to help athletes on a massive scale, on a major level. You're giving it all out. Um, I hate, I personally hate that track and field is such a secret sport. Um, so I, I really do admire, I love what you're doing. I've been watching your journey. Um, when you said that you guys were practicing outside of a baseball field, I can, I'm thinking back and I remember seeing some of those videos where it was, I was thinking like, they're not at, <laughs> they're not at a track. Like, they're, where is the jump pit at? <laughs> I, do, I remember seeing that, but now that you say it, it's like, wow, to watch your journey has been so amazing. I remember when you were coaching at the high school and, you know, we can kind of see the, the level that, you know, um, you were coaching at. Now it's, it's a whole nother level. You know, it's a whole different game for you. So congratulations again on everything that you've accomplished, everything that you are you have in the works. You know, um, I definitely see how far you can take this. Um, if, you, if you're a jumper and you're tuning into this, you're watching the playback, you're watching the live, and you need some help, some assistance, you're serious about your sport, your event, you want to push your performance, go sign up for the Jump 101 program. You need it. You, it it's a game changer. I promise you that. I've met people that are personally on the program. I've met Kimani Briggs. It, it's a game changer. I promise you that. I see the feedback. I see how it's helping athletes go off and get scholarships to college at Oregon, at Georgia, at uh, Berkeley. I, I've, I've literally seen it, you know. Um, it, it's been amazing watching your journey. So this episode is brought to you by <laughs> Jump Squad, Leave Squad, Jump Squad 101. Tap the link in this bio. Make sure you get that, that program. Thank you again, Coach, for sitting down and having this conversation with me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. And I want to also give you your flowers for um, just creating this platform you know, for bringing awareness to the sport and having these conversations and letting those, you know, have a voice and just bringing awareness to everything that's going on in the sport. Because I think once everything's on the table, then we can have a conversation about everything there and then talk about those things. So uh, I appreciate what you do. I love all the posts and, you know, keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck Thank to you and your career as well. Appreciate that. I'm serious about it too, you know. Um, I told myself, I'm going to give myself at least three to four years, you know, and then I sat back and I thought about it. Um, and I feel like everybody in the sport, our, our, you know, big goal is to make it to the Olympics, right? And with me living in California in 2028, the Olympics are coming out here, you know? It's been in Tokyo, it's been in Beijing, and it's going to be in Paris. And I'm like, there's no way that you're going to come to my home state and I'm not going to at least try to get a foot in the race. Oh, nah, you tripping. You tripping. You know, so like you said, you know, you do have to dedicate yourself. It's not just about this year. You know, 
it, it's a it's a long term journey, you know. Um, watch your progress, um, you know, um, and just stay dedicated to it. You know, eat right, make sure you're sleeping enough. I'm trying to figure out, you know, the part time job and building a business and training, you know, um, that way I can fund my career. But I'm also, you know, teaching the things that I'm going through, the things that I'm learning, the things that are helping me to my teammates as well. You know, I've been able to acquire some some partnerships, some sponsorships. So for the next season, I don't have to even buy running shoes anymore. You know, I'm working with a company as well. So I'm making sure that I give all of those tips out. I'm helping my teammates as well, because I want to see more athletes, you know, succeed in the sport. I believe like the same thing you said, you know, if we had these resources, man, it would be track and field would be on a whole nother level. You know, I'm thankful to be able to work with the Sharks, to be able to train with an adult squad of, of people that are serious, dedicated mm -hmm. to their craft, want to get better. They want to improve the resources we have, the math scientist coach that we have, you know, um, if you're injured, if something's going on with you, he will, he will tweak the workout, you know, um, but he will also tell you, Hey, you know, you kind of need to work on this. So this is what we're going to do. He'll send yeah. you some things to work on your own. So I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and I've been wanting to work with JB for a while. I went to West LA, wish I would have went to Mount Sac, but I truly feel like, you know, um, everything that happens in your journey happens for a reason. And, you know, that's what got me to wanting to create Trackletics, you know, um, wanting to highlight athletes and help push the sport further, you know. Um, so I, I greatly appreciate you giving me my flowers. Thank you. I do appreciate that. It means a lot, you know. Um, I'm, I created this platform to highlight coaches like yourself, athletes, and just really grow the sport. We don't have these conversations. Um, I hate that every day I come home. My brother got the TV on, and it's something about NBA. It's something about, you know, LeBron this and somebody not at practice. And so, like, you get so much information, so much insight about these other sports. I'm like, I want to get to know the track and field athletes. You know, you hear so much about Tim Grover. I want to hear about Keenan Briggs. I want to hear about John Bolton. You know, I want to hear about Dan Path. I want to hear the, the insight, the stuff that are going into their programs, you know? So that is literally why I created this program or created this platform. And again, I greatly appreciate our supporters, coaches like yourself, being able to sit down and have this conversation with me. I, I truly do appreciate it. Well, thank you. Well, that is it for us on Trackletics Live today. Again, this, this episode was brought to you by Jump 101. Go grab that program. <laughs> Tap the link in his bio. Um, I would love to be able to uh, uh, work out, you know, um, some some type of link or something that we can push our followers to your program as well. That okay. way, you know, they can um, have e an easier access to it. Yeah. Um, or, you know, we can just continue to introduce the jumpers that follow me um, to your program as well. You know, so that's something that we definitely got to uh, work on. Um, but go grab that jump. 101 program he's teaching you everything you need to know he's putting all of all of it into the program i promise you you will not be disappointed but that's well, it thank you so much of course all right i'll see you guys see you and good luck at that state <laughs> thank i hope y'all kill it out there yeah wishing you healthy track meet with plenty more prs coach i appreciate that all right enjoy the rest of your day you too